Good Tuesday morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us. From the Ohio Agnet, the voice you know with the News You Trust studio, sponsored by the Grand Equipment Company, where innovation meets execution. I'm Joe Everett. Well, currently 42 degrees outside, and yesterday here on our farm, our goal was to finish soybeans, but Mother Nature had something else in mind, so we switched over and continued to shell some corn. Later on, we'll have a full forecast update to see how the weather holds up for harvest progress. But now, let's check out some of your agricultural news headlines. Well, combine and tractor sales fall in September. U.S. sales of ag tractors dropped by 19% in September of this year compared to September of 2023. New data from the Association of Equipment Manufacturers says combine sales also fell during the month, dropping 41% compared to last year. The 100-plus horsepower tractor segment fell the most from last year, dropping almost 27% in September of 2024 compared to last year. Four-wheel drive tractors were the segment's only gain, selling 1.7% more year-to-date from January through September of 2024. September's ag tractor and combine sales follow a summer that showed a cycle slowdown in sales, says Association of Equipment Manufacturers Vice President Kurt Blades. These declines point to the overall softness in the ag economy. Sales of ag tractors in Canada also dropped in September of 2024, finishing the month 25% behind the total sales in September of last year. Combine sales in Canada also fell 52% compared to last year. In other news, U.S. corn production is up while soybean production drops. Friday's USDA crop production report shows corn production is forecasted at 15.2 billion bushels, up less than 1% from the previous forecast, but down 1% from last year. Soybean growers are expected to increase their production by 10% from 2023, with a forecast at 4.58 billion bushels. Based on conditions as of October 1st, corn yields are expected to average 183.8 bushels per harvested acre, up 0.2 from the previous forecast and is 6.5 bushels higher than last year. Soybean yields are predicted to average 53.1 bushels an acre, down fractionally from the previous forecast, but that is up 2.5 bushels from last year. In other news, Hurricane Milton came ashore south of Tampa, Florida on Wednesday evening, this limiting the damage to Florida's phosphorus fertilizer production facilities. This is good news as farmers prepare for fall fertilizer application season, but despite the good news, there are still some phosphorus fertilizer issues caused by Hurricane Milton. Josh Linville, Vice President of Fertilizer for Stonex, said he would not be surprised to see the production facilities offline for at least a couple of weeks. There is a lot of cleanup and rebuilding in residential areas that might keep workers from returning immediately to these facilities. Regardless of whether production is being lost due to the facility damage or from the lack of workforce, production is being lost. This is not good news for phosphorus fertilizers, which is already in a tight supply marketplace. Last week, both DAP and MAP were higher compared to last year at this time, and they are the only fertilizers that were more expensive. MAP was 5% more expensive, while DAP was 2% higher looking back at last year. DAP had an average price of $736 per ton, while MAP had a price of $805 per ton. Stay tuned. We'll be back to take a look at today's weather after this. Farmers, be safe moving from field to field this season. Keep your warning lights clean and in good working order for roadway travel. Take a few minutes to check your lights and reflectors and make sure your slow-moving vehicle emblem is visible as you share the road. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. This message provided to you by the Ohio Agnet, OSU Extension Ag Safety and Health Team, and this station. Those long days in a tractor cab can really put a cramp in your body. So while refueling or refilling your equipment, walk around the tractor a few times or do a few head-to-toe stretching exercises. When fatigue does set in, that's when injuries and mistakes happen. Know when it's time to take a break and recharge. Let's make sure everyone gets home safe and sound. This message from the Ohio Agnet, OSU Extension, Ag Safety and Health Team, and this station. Now let's take a look at today's weather brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at SeedConsultants.com. Here's the forecast. 
Cool temperatures remain in control today, but we're slightly better than yesterday. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin with a look at that Ohio Ag Weather Update. Taking a look at the situation that's unfolding. North winds are still in control today, but they're not quite as strong as yesterday. So I think the lake effect cloud cover and the lake effect precipitation probably dials it back ever so slightly today. And that's a good thing. Temperatures are still going to be cool. We're cool tomorrow as well. Frost conditions overnight tonight. We could see freezes in a large part of Ohio overnight tomorrow night into early Thursday. But we see temperatures bounce quickly the second part of the week. By Thursday afternoon, we're back to normal and a bit above normal. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, warm, dry, sunny. We are watching a frontal boundary try and move out of the central plains and great plains into the central and western corn belt, dying as it approaches the Mississippi. Mississippi River. So moisture then is only going to be affecting Wisconsin and the Great Lakes. I do think that triggers some clouds in northern parts of Ohio overnight Sunday night into Monday, but no precipitation at this point. I'm going to keep our forecast dry. The rest of next week, Monday afternoon through Thursday into Friday, sunny, warm and dry. Nothing in this forecast this time around that says we're going to be seeing a big delays in harvest. The key here is seeing the moisture back off today versus yesterday as it's coming off of Lake Erie. That's a look at your forecast. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ryan Martin. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Well, the October World Agriculture Supply and Demand Estimate Report, also known as the WASD, says that the 2024 through the 2025 corn outlook is for smaller supplies, larger exports, and reduced ending stocks. With supply falling and use rising, ending stocks are cut 58 million bushels to 2 billion. The season average corn price received by producers is unchanged at $4.10 a bushel. U.S. soybean production is forecasted at 134.4 million tons, down 0.3 million from last month. With lower soybean production partly offset by slightly higher beginning stocks, supplies are lowered by 2 million bushels, to 4.9 billion. The season average soybean price is unchanged at $10.80 a bushel. The outlook for U.S. wheat calls for reduced supplies, larger domestic use, unchanged exports, and lower ending stocks. Projected ending stocks are lowered by 16 million bushels to 812 million, still up 17% from the previous year. The season average farm price for wheat is unchanged at 570 a bushel. Now let's check in with John Harreth, for an update from the U.S. Meat Export Federation. The U.S. Meat Export Federation recently teamed up with the National Pork Board and Indiana Soybean Alliance for the third season of Pork Stars, a high-profile cooking competition in Vietnam. Indiana soy grower Chris Eck traveled to Vietnam for the Pork Stars event. We came with the Indiana Soybean Alliance uh, to promote U.S. pork, which is, uh, you know, our soybeans from Indiana are a main ingredient in the pork, and that's a good way to extend the profits towards making a more valuable product and exporting those to Vietnam. The Pork Stars is pretty good. It's, we're in the third year. Fun to see this much excitement around something you're going to have for dinner, but they've really made it a big show. They had several contestants to start with, limited down to three, and then those were each matched with, a, uh, I think, an influencer off of uh, TikTok or you know, social media, and then they're set up to make uh, each of them make a dish, and then uh, we'll see who wins at the end. While the Vietnam market does present some access challenges, National Pork Board President Al Wolf Cole of Iowa sees potential. It's a niche market. We have to sell the quality of U.S. pork, the reliability, the taste and flavor. Uh, we're not going to compete on price. There's a tariff issue here that keeps us a little more expensive than some of our competitors, so we have to sell it on quality, taste and flavor. It's a long game. I think we need to be here. I think there's a lot of market potential. Um, But as this economy grows, as the middle class rises, as uh, they move to more of a structure uh, away from wet markets and grocery stores and modern Western economy, I think that's when the real opportunity comes for us. The Pork Stars event was sponsored by the National Pork Board, the Indiana Soybean Alliance, and the Indiana Corn Marketing Council, with event proceeds benefiting a Vietnamese charity that provides nutritious meals to children in rural Vietnam. For more, please visit USMEF.org. For the U.S. Meat Export Federation, I'm John Harris. Hey, thanks, John. Well, Pure Prairie Poultry declared bankruptcy and a shutdown with little notice, affecting workers at a processing plant in Iowa and contract growers in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The Wisconsin Farmers Union says this has left farmers in a dire straits with thousands of birds to feed and no feed or compensation coming. 
The growers are reporting that they will have to euthanize tens of thousands of birds because it is too expensive to feed that many out of their pockets. Reports say Pure Prairie Poultry received $45 million in taxpayer subsidies in 2022. Chickens in some of the company's Wisconsin sheds haven't been fed for more than a week and have resorted to cannibalism to survive. No feed or relief from their sufferings is in sight as Pure Prairie Poultry is no longer feeding the birds and is refusing to respond to any inquiries from its contracted farmers about the situation. Now let's check in for an update from our own Matt Reese. In the aftermath of the upcoming election, there will be implications for farm planning, taxes, and the regulatory environment. We take a look at some of those in this week's Ohio AgNet podcast, along with some recent Ohio highlights from the World Dairy Expo, and much more. Be sure to check it out at OCJ.com or wherever your podcasts are found. Hey, thanks, Matt. Stay tuned. We'll be back with the grain analysis in your overnight markets after this. In a time of tight margins when every penny counts, could you be saving more on your monthly energy bill? Ohio Farm Bureau is here to help members get competitive electric and natural gas supply prices through its energy savings program. Participants save an average of 10% on their rates. Let Ohio Farm Bureau help you take the guesswork out of energy savings. Request your free bill analysis at ofb.ag backslash energy program. Savings not guaranteed. Actual savings may vary. AmeriHealth Caritas Ohio is your Medicaid plan for more. More benefits, more rewards. We know that good health means more than just seeing a doctor when you're sick. Eligible members can receive extras like home-delivered meals and family essentials, like baby carriers and kids' school supplies. Members can even earn rewards for playing mobile health trivia games. Learn more at AmerihealthCaritasOH.com and call the Ohio Medicaid Consumer Hotline at 1-800-324-8680 to choose AmeriHealth Caritas Ohio. It's now time for the Louis Dreyfus Grain Analysis, and that is brought to you by the Ohio Soybean Council and your Soybean Checkoff. Here's Ryan Martin. Grain market started off the week on a mostly lower note yesterday. For a brief moment in time, it looked like soybeans might be able to trade positive. And, well, you know, they did for a little bit, but we could not stay there as we finished out the day overall. Looking for reasons why the markets did what they did yesterday, well, there really wasn't a lot in the marketplace, at least in terms of headlines. Definitely not anything that would have spooked the corn to be 7 to 8 lower and the wheat markets to be down double digits. Well, maybe on wheat there was. Wheat futures were lower yesterday on rumors that Russia's export sources are already offering wheat below the $250 per metric ton floor that was announced late Friday. Now, we don't have any way of knowing whether the cash rumors are true. It will take a public tender to prove the whereabouts of the Russian cash market. But if they're already undercutting the floor that they put in on late last week, Uh, You really can't do anything about it. The market's going to do what it does. Egypt's GASC announced that it will not pay any more than $240 a metric ton delivered. And the Russian $250 per metric ton floor has produced a considerable cash market uncertainty. There was a big order that filled in five minutes and narrowed the December March spread by about a penny and a half yesterday. That was a little bit of an eyebrow raiser overall. Barge freight on the Illinois River is crashing because of recent rains. The uh, corn basis bids were up yesterday as well. The Columbus Day holiday prevented USDA from updating U.S. daily grain and soy sales reports and the weekend, or rather the weekly export inspections. So both of those sets of numbers will be out here later today. Not sure we see much on the flash reported side. NOPA will release their September soybean crush and soy oil stocks estimate today. The uh, expectations are for the crush rate to be in at 177 million bushels. Soy oil Oil stocks about 1.04 billion pounds. The soy oil stocks would be one of the lowest in decades if we reach that level. I'm Ryan Martin. Hey, thanks, Ryan. Now let's take a look at your overnight markets brought to you by Seed Consultants. Simply better performance online at seedconsultants.com. Things not looking very positive in Chicago. Let's start off with December corn 407 down one and a quarter. March corn 423 and a half down one and a quarter. November soybeans 994 down 2, January soybeans 1009 and a half down 2. December wheat 583 and a quarter down 2. Looking at livestock from yesterday's close, October live cattle 18825 down 35 cents. December live cattle 18792 up 35 cents. 
October lean hogs, 84.10, up two cents. December lean hogs, 75.80, down $1.85. November feeder cattle, 249.57, down 22 cents. And January feeder cattle, 247.60, up 35 cents. As the harvest season rolls on, be safe out there and have a great day. I'm Joe Everett, and you're listening to the Ohio Agnet.